Also, tributes continue to pour in from the world of radio for the legendary DJ Steve Wright. We'll speak to his co-host, Janie Lee Grace, later in the programme. That's not Steve Wright, by the way, just in case you were wondering. That's Simon Bates. Wow. There have been countless tributes from the world of radio and from listeners, of course, for the legendary DJ Steve Wright, who died unexpectedly this week at the age of 69. Later today, a special Sunday Love Songs tribute show will be dedicated to Steve on Radio 2 and will feature messages from his listeners. Let's talk now to Janie Lee Grace, who presented with Steve for 24 years and uh, joins us this morning. Uh, Janie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this morning. We're, we're really grateful to you. Our, our condolences, because you can't work with someone for 24 years and not become a friend. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was just absolutely devastating. You know, it's just been amazing to see all the, the, the tributes for Steve. He would just never have believed it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, and for those of us who listened and who admired for, for decades on Radio 1 and then, and then on Radio 2, just tell us what was he like, really, as a, as a, as a chap? He was very funny. I mean, <laughs> incredibly witty. And I sometimes say that if only we could have kept the outtakes, all of the stuff that we did when the microphone wasn't on. I mean, we'd really have a show there because he was so, so funny. Um, he was very, um, he, he was a perfectionist, let's be truthful. Mm. He really cared about getting everything right. So, you know, lots of people have spoken about his professionalism and the fact that he would rock up at 9 a.m. for a show at 2 p.m. Yeah. pretty much every day. Um, you know, he really put the work in. Um, and I think it was just so important for Steve to make every single moment relatable so when you heard it on air probably sounded fairly effortless but yeah. he certainly didn't rock up and put a, a track on he he would have thought through everything and and really wanted to make sure that that people appreciated it that, that it was completely relatable that's, that's exactly it isn't mm. it the, the fact that it, it sounded so natural effortless. yeah because yeah, it yeah and and janie uh... It's funny because I can't actually hear your name, Janie Lee Grace, without hearing it in his voice. Uh, because really, for a lot of people, he was the sound throughout their lives. He was a constant, wasn't he? He really was. And I think that's the thing that has shocked so many people when they realise, wow, actually, when I think back, you know, I was driving a truck and, 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 he, and it meant everything to me. It actually saved my day. You know, parents on the school run, it doesn't matter what you were doing. Everyone's everyone's sort of experience was of, of righty, you know, whether that's in the car or, or at home. And, and yeah, as you say, someone on social media said, I do apologise, something in the background, something in the back um, on, on social media said he was the sound of my life. Um, and you can't put it better than that, can you? Yeah. And also one of the things I've noticed is that nobody has a bad word to say about him. He, despite being a huge star, he seemed to always make time for listeners and for people he worked with. Yeah, he really did. He took a lot of time for absolutely everyone. So, I, you know, I mentioned when I did a, a radio, a local radio, somebody was saying that they they had come into the studio for some reason, I, I forget what, and they brought a friend along with them. And whereas normally you'd say, well, OK, can you wait in the cafe? Steve would just say, come on in, absolutely come on in. He always had time for people. He was really good at being supportive of other people's careers as well. So if we had a comedian come in maybe, who perhaps had a 18 month tour, you know, they do these really long tours across the UK. He would always say, look, if, if all the tickets don't sell, just come back in and we'll do another plug and we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll make sure it all sells out for you. He actually uh, asked Radio 2, to give me love songs when he was away at one mm. point, which was very sweet of him. But that's exactly how he was. He kind of, if he, if he could give you a bit of a leg up, then he absolutely would. Well, that's really lovely to hear. And, and like you say, that preparation, I, I read that the other day, that it, obviously never, never having worked with him or met him, he came in at nine o'clock because when he'd do the factoids and things, mm. you almost thought he'd just pulled them out of the back of a tabloid <laughs> and was just reading them out. And there's obviously so much effort and, that goes into making something sound so easy. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody asked me about the factoids and someone said I was rather shocked to, re to realise that perhaps not every single one was true. And I said, come on, you know, we did the best we could. <laughs> we made them as authentic as we could. Every now and then, you know, just to have a bit of fun. Of course he would throw in one that was obviously not true. Not if it was anything important, but, you know, we had to have a bit of fun with it. But, yeah, there was masses and masses of preparation and time went into it. And, you know, he would think very carefully about whether he would cover a segment, whether he would 
choose a certain feature, whether he would interview a certain person. And, you know, I have to say that the guests, I'm sure they'll back this up. The majority of celebrities and authors and experts and actors, you know, who came in, it was their favorite show to do because he made it such fun. It was a little bit like being, you know, having a chat with a friend. Although having said that, he could also do a bit more of a hard hitting interview if he needed to. So politicians might come in thinking that they were just okay. going to have a complete yeah. start. Um, but actually might deliver quite a hard-hitting question. Yeah, never to be underestimated. Um, thank you so much for talking to us this morning and for sharing your memories of your colleague and, more importantly, your friend, Steve Wright. Jenny Lee Grace, thank you. Thank you. And, of course, there's a special tribute version of Sunday Love Songs uh, happening today.